Hello, my name is Eric Torres, and this is my standards summary video. Within this video, I will discuss the different standards for the program, and also I will discuss uh, what classes and possibly what projects helped me understand the standard better and how I can implement that standard effectively. So for our first standard, it says an education leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by facilitating the development, articulation, implementation, and stewardship of a vision for high expectations of learning that is supported by all stakeholders. Um, starting with our very first class, the Foundations of Educational Administration, we discussed the importance of having values, having a mission, and creating a mission statement within ourselves. Also, we discussed how important it is to have a mission statement and a vision for our school buildings, programs, and for our faculty, so that way they know um, how we are going to guide ourselves and how we are going to get to the vision that we want for our school. Also, uh, for that same standard, we uh, we had the class of inquiry and research, and we discussed or we did a project based on action research. And with action, action research, we can use data, we can gather data, we can analyze data to see how we are doing and how we are progressing with our building-wide goals, goals. And we can see if we need to change our strategies or if we can continue with our strategies that we have in place by using data-based decisions. Um, lastly, we discussed, or the class that we did have next was a principal as an assessment leader. We discussed screeners, we discussed uh, PSATs, ACTs, KELPA, but with those different types of assessments, we discussed the importance of those assessments, such as screeners, they can tell us the current levels of our students. We do also have social emotional uh, screeners as well that lets us know um, what students are probably, um, are in need of some type of social emotional help and we can use that information to get the resources and needs of that student met. Uh, the next standard is standard number two, an education leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by advocating, nurturing, and sustaining a school culture and instructional program conducive to student learning and staff professional growth. So within this standard, school culture is extremely important. So with that being said, with our class called Organizational Health and Performance, we discussed our core values, and we also discussed how we can create the core values of, this, of the school building and how we can work collaboratively with our uh, staff members in order to create those core values and use those core values routinely throughout the year to the point where it does become culture. And then also we discussed, or uh, we looked at different strategies to assess our school, school culture so that way we know what levers we can pull within our school climate and culture. So that way we can get the culture where we want it to be, which is uh, a collaborative culture. That's something that's uh, conducive for our staff and for our students. And we definitely wanna focus on education being highly important and high, highly valued within our school culture. We also discussed uh, in regards to uh, staff professional growth, we discussed creating PLC introduction plans on how we can introduce professional learning communities um, piece by piece throughout the school year. And within those professional learning communities, teachers can work collaboratively to create strategies or to share strategies that have been successful that help students achieve. They can also create formative, common formative or summative assessments so that way students have the same assessment and that way they can use that data from uh, the students to reflect on what strategies are working or not working. Also, we have from our school personnel class, kind of on the same boat with the PLC is create, creating meaningful PD sessions. We can create meaningful PD sessions throughout the school year that teachers can garner valuable skills that are going to be needed throughout the school year. And also a evaluation toolkit is something that we created as well. So that way we as instructional leaders can go look at different classrooms, see uh, the learning that is happening in a room, look at the rigor, and then we can talk with our teachers 
and have a meeting with them on how that went. And then lastly, appropriate technologies to support teaching and learning in the school. We created a tech pledge within our technology course. And within our tech pledge, we value or we promised or we pledged that we would use technology with our teachers and with our students and that we would promote technology for uh, learning environments on how we can use maybe like AI or how we can use uh, virtual tours that can enhance the learning of students. Um, there are all types of uh, tools in technology and on our, com on our computers that can help bridge the gap of learning uh, with our students. Uh, the next one, standard three, an education leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by ensuring the management of the organization, operation, and resources for a safe, efficient, and effective learning environment. Uh, this standard really focuses on the operations side of being a school leader. And a course that really discussed the operations sides of being a school leader is the school planning, operations, and finance class. Within that class, we really focused on um, district and building budget analyses. So we looked at um, different, we looked at the monies between the district and the building, and we looked at how things can, how budgets can be allocated or how monies can be allocated. We looked at different codes within our school building finances. And we also kind of analyzed the fiscal spending within uh, buildings. We also looked at creating uh, building strategic proposals. In case we need some type of resource, we learned how to build a proposal so we can gain resources needed from the district. We also looked at site safety observations. In this project, we pretty much went to our buildings and we looked at safety and we looked at different areas of our building to ensure that the buildings were safe that they were up to code, so that way students have a safe learning environment to come and learn. And it is all very conducive and very vital to a student's learning experience to have a safe building. Oh, also, we discussed uh, distributed leadership. We discussed distributed leadership and how we can create distributed leadership is by creating different teams or responsibilities and by that, we can create focus teams, we can create um, leadership teams, we can create like a child study team, but that is a form of distributed leadership that we can do. Standard number four, an educational leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by collaborating with faculty and school, home and community members, and responding to diverse stakeholders' interests and needs and mobilizing external resources. A major class that definitely helped uh, my knowledge with this course or with this standard is the Student Services Climate and Programs class. We discussed SPED law and how we need to be aware of special education laws so that way we can uh, meet the needs of our diverse learners. We talked about parent involvement and how in different strategies to ensure that parents are involved within our school and within our decisions. We discussed like doing uh, different forms of communication that can be electronic or paper or email. Uh, we also looked at grant proposals and how we can write grant proposals uh, to community members. We can, grant, we can write grant proposals to gain resources uh, that could be for a school project and we learned how to write those proposals so we can gain those resources for the support of our students' learning. But also, it's all about working and being in collaboration with our community, especially within our area that our school is in. And it's about knowing the community, about collaborating with community members, and how we can network. And by networking and knowing our community members, we can have different resources available to us if we just network, collaborate, ask and write grants or, you know, um, work with the different businesses within our areas.
The next standard, standard number five, an education leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by acting with integrity, fairness, and an ethical manner. The biggest thing, most definitely, that I learned from our ethics class is that educational leaders need to work and operate and interact with students, parents, uh, community members with integrity, fairness, um, and be ethical and promote the and promote democracy. And with that, and within our ethics class, we discuss the different the different ethic lenses, such as the ethic of justice, ethic of care, ethic of pro the profession, ethic of critique, and how these different ethical lenses can guide a an administrator through different things that do that they do encounter every single day. And those ethical lenses cause us to question our decisions that we make, who's going to benefit, who's possibly possibly not going to benefit, and it helps guide our thinking into are we making the correct decisions and are our decisions, how are our decisions going to impact our students and our learning environment. And also with this same uh, standard, it is very important to understand district policy local state laws and federal laws so that way we understand when we ask ourselves our ask ourselves these ethical questions are we at least as well within the boundaries of law and policy the last standard standard number six an education leader at the building level applies knowledge that promotes the success of every student by understanding responding to and influencing the political social and economic, legal, and cultural context. The big thing that I definitely understand with this standard is that educational leaders need to be, or need to have knowledge of district policy, local, state, and federal laws. We need to have an understanding of those so that way when we do respond or when we do decide to have some type, when we do influence some type of decisions that are being made either district or um, state policy decision-wide, when we do decide to encounter those situations, we need to understand our boundaries when it comes to those situations. And that we also need to understand our ethics when we encounter these situations as well. And again, it goes back to the different lenses of ethical thinking, the critique, the justice, the care and the profession, we need to use those different lenses to guide our thinking when we do encounter these type of situations that regard on how we are going to um, apply or influence political, social, economic, and legal cultural context. And speaking of cultural context, us as educational leaders need to be culturally responsive leaders. We need to be proactive with our students that have been marginalized. We need to be proactive by making sure that we are being equitable with our resources so that way all students have equitable resources. We need to promote equality. We need to promote democracy. We need to promote fairness and, and integrity as well. Uh, to give a great example of being culturally responsive leaders, uh, I am a part of BASE here in Wichita. And BASE stands for a Better Academics and Social Excellence. Our huge goal with this program that I do use or that I am a part of or pioneer at East High, our big goal is, is to ensure that our students of color, whether they're Black, Latino, um, Asian, or whatever, Middle Eastern, whatever their background is, is that we get our men that are of color and we get them into harder courses well, more challenging courses, because we have looked at the data and we have noticed that there is not a lot of males that are of color in some of our more challenging courses, like AP courses or honor courses. So we want to be fair. We want to be equitable. We want to be equal. And we want to make sure that representation is within our school. So that is the end of my video. I greatly appreciate you watching and um, evaluating my performance on these standards and evaluating my discussion about these standards as well. Thank you. Have a good day.